The man who desired gold. Somebody give me a brief synopsis of what happened. He was feeling like he was in a place where he, he was thinking about what he had. And then he started to realize like that he didn't have things because he didn't ask for it. He didn't desire it. He didn't look for it. Yep. Yep. Um, who else? Together. I'm sorry. Somebody else? I'm sorry. They were they were realizing that uh, the people around them were making more money than them, and there was a difference between what they were doing and what the people around them were doing that were making money. Yeah. Well, anybody else get get anything from a first chapter? Man who desire gold. I I, I would say. Um... I, I would say even in even in that in that in that edition that I read I I listened to because I have the audio book, um, they were talking like he felt played, man. <laughs> like like he was like like you're not you're not smarter than me, you know you know we, you know we share the same time, you don't do this better than me. Like how do you make more money than me? Like it was it was crazy. Like it was it was almost like he was talking like in in this time. And it it was it was hilarious because he's talking like like we talk today, yeah. and a person just want no answers to why you make more than I do. Yeah, yeah. So there was a part in there. Um, uh, I got like some some highlights in here. He says, um, obviously, he says, uh, "What exclaimed Kabai?" So you got bands here and Kabai. Kabai is his magic is um, musical friend. He he does music. And Bansir is in a in a rough place right now. He's just having a really, really tough day. Because he at, at some point he realizes that the slaves in Babylon were not doing too much worse than he was as a free man. Like they're there carrying the water and you know, they're slaves. But he's like, yo, we got about this, we're doing about the same financially. So he says, um, you know, he's just kind of down. And Kabai says, what's up? And uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. Um, so Bansir says, a torment from the gods it must be. Bansir agreed. It began with a dream, a senseless dream, in which I thought I was a man of means. From my belt hung a handsome purse, heavy with coins. There were shekels, which I cast with careless freedom to the beggars. There were pieces of silver, which... There are pieces of silver with which I did buy finery for my wife and whatever I did desire for myself. There were pieces of gold which made me feel assured of the future and unafraid to spend the silver. But he started that part that part off with, it was a torment from the gods. The desire to be successful was tormenting him. Ain't that deep? To be like, let's just say like on social media or whatever, to see success is tormenting you. Okay, and then he says, why indeed? Because I woke, I awoke and remembered how empty my purse was. <laughs> he had a dream of success, but when he woke up, he, he deemed that as a nightmare because he woke up in reality. Yikes. I know I can relate. Can anyone relate? It would be cool. Like, I remember thinking it would be so cool to live in a third world country. Because if I don't have anything and everybody else doesn't have anything, we don't have anything together. I'm good. I'm not even thinking. Uh, I, I don't even know that this, this is just life. I don't know this is a bad situation. I don't have anything to compare it to. The torment came when I realized that other people were doing better than me. Ain't that deep? Uh, that really struck a chord with your boy. Uh, was somebody about to say something? Okay, y'all can just- Yeah, I wanted out. to say something real quick. Uh, Go for sorry, y'all. All right, so yeah, I can relate to that, Dave. Like, I, I'm kind of 
transitioning myself. Like, I'm not jealous of nobody, but I know that I'm as smart as some people, but my purse is kind of shallow right now. But I, I know I got the intentions and the means, like, educational and work, work ethic to do things. It's just like, man, it ain't coming to fruition. But I just, I'm going to get off real quick, too. I don't want to hold up too much time. But the living in the third world, third world country i was actually in iraq man for like a year and i saw how them people was living man they they like man it's a horrible thing man they we'll give them mres like that's meal ready to eat off our trucks like what we had to eat and the kids will fight each other for it so we had to stop giving them food mm. Mm. Tanisha. hey i was gonna say that um sometimes you can compare that to people who live in a hood or have a hood mentality where they don't know anything else. They've never left their hood. They never left. Like It's like that in Atlanta. It's like that in D.C. where there's certain people that don't leave their area. That's all they know. So you say about leaving, well, I'm going to leave for? They don't want to see nothing else. They don't know nothing else. And they keep you in a mindset where what you have is enough when you don't know anything about anything outside of what your regular norm is. So we can be living in a third world country inside our minds here now. Probably yeah, um, I think it's gonna either um, being in that environment, it will either um, it will either inspire you, or you'll be tormented by it. Then I think it comes into like personal development. Look, moving moving right along, he says. Um, um, he said, um, "We have been contented subjects." So he's talking to his friend. And they're like really kind of talk. I don't know why my joint. Hold on, because my camera is leaning a little bit. Let me bring that over a little bit. Okay, there we go. That doesn't even seem better. You got the loose tripod. What you do? No, nah, it's a little. I, I I'm unloosing it and then shaking it. All right, forget it. I'm sorry, Jose. Um, he said. So he's talking to his man, and he's like, "Yo, we've we both." grew up together the same way. We both were right. So he says, we have been contented subjects of our kind. We have been satisfied to work long hours and spend our earnings freely. We have learned, we have earned much coin in the years that have passed yet to know the joys that comes from wealth. We must dream about them. Bah. Are we more than dumb sheep? Here's the part that I highlighted. We live in the richest city in all the world. The travelers do say none equals it in wealth. About us is much display of wealth, but of it we ourselves have not. After half a lifetime of hard labor, thou, my best friends, has an empty purse and sayest to me, may I borrow such a trifle as two shekels until after the nobleman's feast is night. Then what do I reply? Do I say, here's my purse, it's content. Will I gladly share? No. I admit that my purse is as empty as thine. What is the matter? Why cannot we acquire silver and gold more than enough for food and robes? He says, we live in the richest city in all the world. Wealth all around us. But you asked me for two shekels, I ain't got it. I'm just as broke as you. And he says, why don't we have enough money for just food and clothing? I tr listen. The first time I read this book, that's exactly where I was. I had just enough money for food and clothing. That's why it was so real for me. I asked myself, "Yo, why don't I have more money?" Like every now and again, I can get some outfits for work. I can get some new work clothes. Um, every now and again, I'll get some sneakers or something like that. I can get a pair of jeans on a good shift from work. I'm not starving, but that's the line. I can't really get over that line. But I live in the richest city in all the world. The richest country in all the world. You all are in, a, uh, in an environment. It's money all around you. But for some reason, we can't get our hands on it. Anybody ever feel like that? This, this story is deep for me. I ain't going to lie. Yeah. Definitely, this is deep. I mean, on a lot of levels. And I think like today we can relate that to people who live in big cities. Like you live in New York, you live in Atlanta, you live in LA, like you're, you're right there, mm -hmm. but you're looking around like, okay, I'm doing all right. But like, 
I'm here, but what the heck? Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I know I always feel like that as well, Dave. I feel like that a lot of the times. Like, wait a minute, I have the I have the the university knowledge. I have all of these certifications. I have, 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 right? But just like we said, like when you asked us like um about what this year is about, it's about the implementation, but then it's also about like the right implementation. Um, because I know I've struggled with that a lot. Like, well, what exact steps do I take? What like where is the where is the the blueprint to get it <laughs> right. and a lot of people they say they have the blueprint but man they don't really be having that blueprint and so I think that that's um like the point of it like is is doing something to get out there to start to try um but really just having some strategy just trying just implementing it just getting out there and just trying everything until you figure out what your correct blueprint is because your blueprint dave isn't going to be my blueprint and so you just got to there get out there and try test and tweak mm -hmm. hello 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 miss 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 west is in the building until you get it right you're talking good you're talking good like what i want to get uh or, or this other party said um uh, all right, so this this is where it happens, right? Um, that is truth, Kabai, unpleasant though, though it be. We do not wish to go on year after year living slavish lives. <laughs> That's a strong. This this joint is so strong. He said, uh, year after year living slavish lives, working, 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 getting nowhere. Anybody feel like that? Might we not find out how others acquire gold and do as they do? Kabai required, perhaps there is some secret. The light bulb goes off. He said, yo, I need to just find somebody who knows how to get wealthy. Who do we know that got some bread? But watch this. Look, look at my man Ben's here. He said, um, Kabai says, yo, the, our cat, our friend, he's wealthy, right? And then Kabai says, he's so wealthy, he's so rich. Ben's here interrupted. I fear I should meet him in the darkness of the night. I should lay my hands upon his fat wallet. My man's like, yo, he's got so much bread. I'm afraid I'm around. Okay. Let me get that. I, I need that. The first thought is, okay, Kabai had the right mentality. He said, yo, we need to find somebody successful, right? First thing, we should find somebody successful. Ben Sayer says, you're right. We can rob him. Let's jump him. You know what I'm saying? That's the first thought of wealth, right? But then Kaba says, you're bugging. He's a nonsense. We prove Kaba, a man's wealth, and this was the strongest part. He says, a man's wealth is not in the purse he carries. carries. A fat purse quickly empties if there be no gold stream to refill it. Our cat has an income that constantly keeps his purse full, no matter how liberally he spends. Kaba understands. He understands that you need a skill that's going, it's not about getting the money. It's about, yo, he's like, yo, if you rob him, he'll get it back again tomorrow because he has a constant stream. Our focus needs to not be about getting money. Our focus needs to be creating a stream. This is so good. All right, last thing. Thou speak with true inspiration, Bansir. Though bringeth to my mind a new understanding, thou makest me to realize the reason why we have never found any measure of wealth, we never sought it. He says, the reason we have not accomplished getting wealthy is because we never truly sought it. Now, we all like are looking to build something and make money, things of that nature, but have you ever truly sought wealth, like sought it out? Not making money, but sought wealth. Like I'm going to intentionally look for wealth. That was good. Okay. Um, questions, comments, concerns before I get into my, my sermon for the day? I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I would say yes and no. Um, yes, because... I was trying to find a way to invest in my money, but not actually understanding like the true principles of credit, of wealth, of how it all works mm -hmm. and moving my money not correctly. So now I am. 
So yes and no, because now I'm like understanding and taking, I wouldn't say losses because they're lessons. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. This year, however, we are going to seek out wealth. We're going to seek it. We're going to intentionally be looking for it. Intentionally. We're going to take the classes. We're going to take the workshops. We are going to find every wealthy person that we can find, and we are going to seek it. Give me a secret. That's why, I listen, this month, this whole, y'all, my goal is 10 millionaires. We'll find 10 millionaires, and I'm going to interview them because I need to dig into their brain. Okay? Um, let's, let, let, let's jump into this call. Jennifer, what's up? Ooh, you're finding a mute button. Okay, so good morning. Happy New Year with now as I used to say years too to y'all did that to Dave. So good and get it. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, you pay attention when, when they roast you, Dave. I pay attention. <laughs> so guys, um, housekeeping for all of you who are new to the call. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you need any support, any help please email support at davidneversleeps.com. If you are brand new, you're on your trial, we will let you into the Facebook group when you're off your trial after your seven days and after your payment hits. Um, if you are requesting access to the Facebook group, please make sure you use the email address that you um, signed up for the call with. And if you don't know where the Facebook group is, it is in your reminder emails that you're getting. If you're not getting, <laughs> if you're not getting emails, hello, hello, hello. Go for it. She's rocking out. Um, if you are not getting emails, please send an email to support at davidneversleeps.com because you miss valuable information that we send out, we communicate through email. And please, 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 I know you want your friends to come, but do not invite them to the Facebook group. Our group is for private paid members only, and we will have to usher them out. And in a minute, I'm gonna start calling you guys out. So please stop doing that, okay? If you want your friends to join, get paid off of letting them join, get an affiliate link. I'll drop that in the chat in a minute and invite your friends that way and have them join for the dollar trial with the affiliate link. That's it. You guys have an amazing day. Good stuff. All right, cool. Let's jump into it, man. I'm uh, I'm going clubhouse with it. I'm going clubhouse because I think it's going to be good. All right. Who wants to be a millionaire is the goal. Is the, is the conversation around here? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Just put it in the chat. Um, who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, I, 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 have, I have quite a little sermon today. Hold on, let me bring up my my sleepless my uh, morning meetup family. Okay, uh, let me bring y'all up real quick. Let me bring y'all up real quick. Hold on. All right, all right, all right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Give me a second, y'all. Give me a second. Give me a second. All right, cool, cool. Um, why do you want to be a millionaire, though, is my question. Why do you want to be a millionaire, is my question. Why, 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 why? Just put it in the chat. Put it in the chat. Why do you want to be a millionaire? So the, the topic of this conversation, all right, that's cool, is who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? Okay, cool. I've, I've, I've come up with a couple reasons why I believe you should want to get rich. Now, there's some people that have a problem with that. And, um, and that's okay. That's 100% okay. But um, I want to talk about why you should really, really want to get rich. It's, um, it's really a very, very noble thing to consider if you really think about it. Here we go. The first reason I believe, I believe that you should want to get rich because we're reading Richest Man in Babylon. And I feel like it is a um, it is a duty or an obligation of you to want to get rich. The first reason I believe you should want to get rich is you can help more people. You can help more people. 
imagine the scenario that we're in where we don't have enough. Remember, we're re reading Richard's Man in ba Babylon. Kabai comes to Bansir and Kabai says, Yo, Bansir, you chilling, ain't you? Dang, you hanging out. That must mean you have money. He said, you must, you're so wealthy that you can just sit on the wall and chill. You got to be all right. He says, yo, let me, let me get two shekels. Can I have two shekels? You must got it because clearly you ain't working. Bansir looks and says, yo, man, I ain't got two shekels. I'm just as broke as you are. But, but he said, yo, I should be in a position where I can give you the two, right? It would hurt my heart when my mom asked me for something and I can't help her out. There's some points, especially, especially in my entrepreneurial journey where my mother says, yo, I need a little help. Do you got it? And my question is no, I don't. I'm sorry. I'm at a point too where I'm an entrepreneur. So I'm making sales, but I don't have any money. But I wanted to get to a point where like Arcad, right? He has a stream of income that no matter if, if you, I can give away too. I can, I can flick a little coin to the poor and it doesn't really affect me, but you can really, really help more people. The question is, who do you know that needs help? that you can't help. Just throw it in the chat real quick. Uh, for those that are on Clubhouse, we are in uh, the morning meetup live. Okay, I'm gonna be on here for maybe like 20 minutes and then uh, I'll probably shut down the room unless my brother Dewan or somebody wants to hold down the room, we could do that. Um, but the, the reason, so there, there are certain reasons why I believe you should really, really desire to get rich. It has nothing to do with money, but you can help more people. So let's just make a little list of the people that you, no, the people that you know, the people that you know need help. So in your own notes, you'll probably say, okay, mom, by name, brother, by name, your wife, your kids, spouse, things of that nature. I'm asking you to create a list of the people that you know need help. You know they need help. It's important. You know the people. You know the people. And I want you to put them by name, like at least... Maybe it's on a, on a board or something like that, people that you know. Secondly, who needs help that you don't know? Who needs help that you don't know? The homeless. Um, maybe people that um, have been um, abused, like there are kids in, sh in shelters or homes. That because you are so selfish and so high and mighty to think that, oh, I don't do things for the money. I don't need money. And it's I, 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 I. And you're so selfish that you won't go grind and go build a stream of income to help some people that you don't know. You ever talk to those people? When you start talking about money, they're like, oh, life ain't about money. I don't need no money. I just want to be happy. You're selfish. You're selfish at the end of the day. So there are people that you know that you can help if you went and got rich, okay? I'm just, I just want to talk about going to get rich. Here's the thing. I'm not, I'm not teaching you um, how to get rich right now, okay? I don't necessarily consider myself rich. I mean, it's like a, you'd have to define it, right? And I don't know if there's like a clear definition based off of a number, but I'm doing okay in, depending on what table I'm sitting at. Again, I was telling the story. I was sitting down with, um, I was at the wedding with um, with a Wall Street Trapper and Nehemiah Davis. And I had a moment. And I realized that I'm like moments away from poverty. <laughs> like at some tables, wow, David, you're doing great. But I'm sitting next to these guys. And I'm like, yo, I'm this close to homeless. I'm doing bad. So I'm not, I'm not here to tell you like, how to get rich or claiming that I'm the wealthiest person in the world. But I do have a couple real, real good reasons why I personally need to get rich. One, to help the people that I know. Two, to help the people that I don't know. Okay, you can help more people by creating a legacy. That'd be a good reason to get rich. Not saying that you need money to create a legacy, 
Martin Luther King, I don't know if he's the wealthiest person in the world. He created a legacy. Malcolm X, Mother Teresa, I don't know. I don't know their financial situation, but they created a legacy. But in this day and age, you could do so much in terms of philanthropy if you went and built something big. Also, the feeling of helping people that don't know you helped them. What about the people that you're going to help that don't know you helped them? Now, there's a group of people that you know, your friends, family, that you can assist, right? Then there's a group of people that you don't know. You're going to go out and feed the homeless and they'll say, oh, my gosh, you're a godsend. That's awesome. But then there's a group of people that you are going to bless that won't even know it was you. It's not it's not about the glory that I get, but I want to be in a position where I I can just bless and they will know that God sent an angel to them. Nobody's taking credit. It's one thing to go out and put my stand on a, stand on a truck and give out turkeys during the holidays, right? I'm, I'm, I pull up in the hood and I give out gifts. I got the cameraman there and we, it's good. It's good because it inspires other people to do the same thing. So I'm not saying that you shouldn't record it, things of that nature. Cause when we did the thing at Walmart, we were recording, right? And then other people in other cities, they started doing different versions of it, which is awesome. But you are going to be so well, listen, there are some people that I know, let's just say, um, um, uh, uh, Bill Gates has helped and they don't know Bill Gates helped them, right? That's another feeling, okay? So the first reason I believe you should get rich is because you can help more people. The second reason I believe you should really, really get rich is because of who you have to become to get that way. Do you understand the level of personal development it takes to become a billionaire? I, be, I I truly believe that nowadays, nowadays, um, you can stumble on a million dollars. Now, it still takes skill set, takes like work, but to go like multiple millionaire, you can't you can't trip on that. You have to become something. You have to be well read. You have to get out of your own way. You got to get out of your own head. The personal development that it takes to become rich. I'm not saying for the money. But to accomplish, to, to accomplish gathering a whole bunch of money, golly, can you imagine the personal development that it takes? You've got to learn um, money management. You've got to learn the skill of accumulating money than managing the money. you got to accumulate time management. you got to know how to structure your day. People skills, you got to know how to like really move chess pieces around the board. There's a big project. You got to figure out how to get other people to help you with it because you cannot, it's really, really difficult to get wealthy on your own. Not saying that you can't because there are some traders that sit there and they trade and day trade and they're really good at it and they don't need nobody else. But for the most part, if you are going to get wealthy, the, the mindset that it takes some of you, it's just, it's, it's, it's simply your mindset. Somebody sent me an e email, not an email, a DM. I want to say this was Friday. I want to say it's Friday. They DM me and said, why is your, um, why is your content creation course so expensive? I can't afford, that was the question. Why is it so expensive? I can't afford to pay that type of money. And that was it. That was the whole DM. My reply was, I don't know why you can't afford it. But expensive is relative. Right? The, their mindset, their mindset is your, your price is too much. And they never really thought or considered the fact that maybe the price isn't too much. Maybe the problem is I just can't afford it. There needs to be a mindset shift. It's going to take a long time for that person to get wealthy. They have to change, like their whole mindset has to shift. I, I know, I know, I know they don't read personal development books. I just know it. I don't know the person, but I can imagine they have a million playlists for Spotify. I can imagine they probably love music or sports. 
or entertainment. I know, I don't even I don't know the person. I don't know the person. But I know what their financial situation looks like. I know how they handle money. By the DM. Because I believe the second reason we need to get wealthy or we need to really get rich. And okay, so for the people that are saying, yo, I don't want to be rich, I want to be wealthy. If you look in the dictionary, it's the same definition. Stop being deep. Okay. <laughs> if you look, if you look in a dictionary, rich and wealthy is the same definition. So whatever. But th there there needs to be a mindset. The personal development that it takes, the, you have to master a skill to get rich. I think that's another reason you need to get rich. Don't you want to be good at something that matters? Don't you? Don't you want to be like, don't you really, really want to master something and be amazing at it? That's what it takes to get rich. Again, forget the money. I'm just saying walk in excellence in something. So the first reason I believe you really need to get rich is because um, you can help a lot of people. The more you have, the more you can help other people. The second reason is for the personal development that it takes. The person you have to become to get rich. It's different. You have to tap into like a superpower. You have to like really tap into a mode. You got to stop procrastinating. You got to stop missing opportunities. Personal development. It's just for no other reason. Go get rich just for who you become when you become rich. Okay. Number three. Number three. For the quality of life. I believe you should get rich to enjoy a different quality of life. A different quality of life. So there's somebody that um, wakes up early in the morning and you, go to, you, you, you don't like waking up early in the morning and you go to a place that you don't like full of people that you don't like. And then you get home tired, frustrated, and you still don't have enough. That is not a good quality of life. I think you should go get rich for the quality of life it allows you to have. I'm not saying that rich people have a great quality of life, but I'm talking about for you. Again, I'm not saying that rich people have a great quality of life, but I'm talking about for you. I believe you would be able to drastically improve your quality of life if you had it. Would you agree? It's the quality of life. So we were, um, I was I was recording a podcast episode yesterday and my wife was there. When we finished, um, me and Donnie, we were talking about, um, um, you know, how we need to like, just go away, recharge your battery, just go on a little trip, right? And the conversation goes, yo, we should go somewhere. Where do you want to go? So, well, somewhere hot, maybe a couple of days just to like really get your thoughts together. And I was my wife. I said, you want to go? She said, yeah, we can, but I can't really travel. I'm pregnant, things of that nature. My point in all of this was we can go next week. It wasn't about like the money or, yo, we like, we got to really like budget and make, yo, we, we can go somewhere. I'm, I'm not, listen, I, I promise you, this ain't like something or nothing like that, but I've been at this thing for a long time. And there are certain things that you're allowed to do where my money isn't the issue. Now we're not taking no private jet. We still going to look for the best like price of flights and we, we definitely going to budget it out. Okay. We're not just going to the most expensive hotel. We going to find out what number makes sense, but the, but the freedom the freedom to pick up and go, you will soon experience that. You will soon experience that. You you can't, I, I, I'm telling you, I, there was a there was a shift that took place. And I, I think um I can relate to Terika because I asked Terika on this uh on her uh on the interview we did. And I said, when did you know you were successful? When did you know you were successful? And she said, when I went to the grocery store and I went grocery shopping and I paid for the food without having to check my account first. It was a freedom. She said, she walked out and said, yo, I, I think I made it. I think I made it. Imagine filling up your tank 
and just let you you hit the button and you just let it run. I listen, I I didn't experience that for a long time. It was okay, I know I got $15. I'm putting $15 in there and I'm going to stop it at 15. I'm going to slow down at 14.93. We going to slow down cuz we not going a penny over 15. That it was a, it was a game changer for me when I just I just I just I could turn the gas on and then walk into the store and go get a quick trip pretzel. It 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 was a it was a certain freedom for me. I believe um, it's it's just one less pressure. Okay, so that's the third reason I believe you need to get rich. One, it's for all the people that you can help. Two, it's for you for who you have to become to become wealthy. Number three, for the the quality of life, the freedom. Getting rich provides. Again, I'm not saying all rich people have a high quality of life. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying for you, for the people that are listening, I believe you would know what to do with it and you can drastically improve your quality of life. And lastly, number four, you can be an inspiration. Wouldn't you want to be somebody that inspires other people to succeed? Tupac was amazing. He said, I may not... I may not change the world, but I'm going to spark the mind of those who will. Can you imagine like being successful and kids look up to you? Listen, I, it, it's such a blessing, man. Um, seeds that I planted years ago in high schools. Every couple of months, I run across a student that was in one of my classes and they say, yo, you're the guy. I'm the, the, the guy that uh, he comes to the kiosk all the time now. He said, I'm an entrepreneur because you came to my class, man. You inspired me. You brought all your entrepreneur friends. That felt good. Forget the, forget the money, but the fact that I was able to make enough money to go to a school where they didn't pay me and I didn't need the money, but I wanted to do something amazing. And I, I, I told them my journey on the things that I accomplished. And there was a kid in the classroom and he said, yo, I want, I want to be that. And they become that. And they come to you years later and say, yo, you inspire me. There's no better feeling in the world. You become an inspiration. You become people, somebody that somebody looks up to. And not for the vanity, because you can be caught in the vanity. But I feel so blessed when people say, yo, I watch your videos and you just, just, a, such, just, just an inspiration. God is good. So those are the four reasons I believe it's important, vital for you to run after wealth, to really get rich, to go build something. All right, so look guys, we on um, the book, Richest Man in Babylon and the chapter, Richest Man in Babylon. So um, this was really, really good. In the first chapter, um, Bansir and Kabai were, um, they're frustrated, okay? Trying to figure out how to how to make wealth, right? Kabai has this idea. Hey, we know this guy, Arcad. He's really rich. Bansir says, yes, I'm going to rob him. I'm going to put my hands on him. And I was going to take his bread. Uh, well, Kabai says, nah, let's just, let's just listen to what he has to say. So in this particular chapter, uh, we get into that. So um, one of the principles I took was, um, it says, um, uh, why then should a fickle? Oh, so for one, they talk about a fickle fate as if it's like a, like as if it's a person, and he he sees money very visually, right? So he says, um, therefore, there upon Arcad remonstrated with them, saying, if you have not acquired more than a bare existence in the years since we were youths, it is because you either have failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth or else you do not observe them. So two reasons that um, if since a child, we've, we've all made a lot of money, if you think about it, since a child. You know, your you know, allowance or some of us were raking leaves or cutting grass or whatever, we were making money. And then, you know, through college or making money, we got these jobs. And many of us have nothing to show for it. But 
Arcad says it's either because um, we failed to learn the laws that govern the building of wealth or else we don't observe them. Well, what are these laws that govern building wealth, right? If we learn the laws, we'll be fine, right? Um, so he gets into it and he said, and when I realized, um, da -da -da, and when I realized this, I declared to myself that I would claim my share of the good things of life. So Arcad sees these, these people that are making money. And what really stuck out to me is that he said, when I realized all of this, I declared to myself that I would claim my share of the good things of life. The first time I read it, that stuck out to me because I said, yo, I never really made a strong decision. Yo, I, I'm going to sit here and make a decision to become wealthy. Now, um, somebody DM me yesterday, and uh, I don't know if it was I, – I don't, I, I don't want you guys to think that, like, I'm all about making money. It just so happens that we're on that on this particular chapter, okay? But I think it's important to make a declaration that, yo, I am going to be successful. Whatever the success is, okay? It may not be millions of dollars. You might just make a declaration that I don't want to fall below the negative anymore. But whatever your goal is, it's fine, okay? It's not, it's not about making money. However, money is just a good way to keep score. How are we doing in that particular area? Number will show. So um, he made a declaration. He said, I decided that if I was to achieve what I desired, time and study would be required. This part was really good. He talked about time and study. As for time, all men have it in abundance. Time, we all have it in abundance. You, each of you, have let slip by sufficient time to have made yourself wealthy. So, hold on. Let me just move this. Do, 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 do. All right, cool. So he said, um, time and study. We all have sufficient time. But what do a lot of us say when it comes to taking on a project or when it's something that we have to do? What is one? Of, what is the number one excuse for people when it comes to building when it something? Comes to building something. I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. I do it later. I just don't have time. Don't have time. But we do have time. We do have. The thing is, if we feel we don't have time, we created that. God gave us twenty-four hours. What we've done is place things in our twenty-four hours in our time. And now we act like, oh, there's not enough hours in a day as if God did something wrong. If God would have gave me 30 hours, I'd be straight. No, we all have the same 24. You decided to put this in there. You decided to put that in there. You decided to fill your day up with things that don't necessarily uh, matter. Now, I will soon have a child and uh, my tune may change. <laughs> However, I'm still going to have to do what I have to do with limited time available. I did that. I create. Well, I didn't do it by myself, but I created this child that I'm going to have to allocate some time for. But we still have to be determined and figure out how we're going to get this thing done. Okay. So he's talking about time. He says we all have enough time, but we let slipped by sufficient time to have made ourselves wealthy. And for, as for study, did not our wise teacher teach us that learning was of two kinds, the one kind being the things we learned and knew, and the other being in the training that taught us how to find out what we did not know, the training and how, and how to find out what we did not know. This is a good thing we're reading this book, right? Because we're trying to find out the laws of wealth, because if we're not wealthy, we either don't know the laws or we're ignoring them. So we're trying to find out which one it is. This is really good. Um, you have filled your part of your bargain. So the guy says, I need these stone tablets. And if you are going, if you complete these stone tablets by the morning, I will teach you how to get wealthy, right? So he says, uh, you have filled your part of the bargain, my son. He said to me kindly, and I am ready to fulfill mine. I will tell you these things you wish to know because I am becoming an old man. An old tongue loves to wag. 
And when youth comes to age for advice, he receives the wisdom of years. I promise you that has been something that I've learned and come to appreciate that people who are older and they've already made their money, they will sit there and talk to you. They will sit there and talk to you. They will sit there and give you the game. They will answer the questions. And old tongue loves, loves to wag. This is, yo, this was written in the twenties. And the principles are still the same. They're solid. So, all right. She said, um, mark you well my words, for if you do not, you will fail to grasp the truth that I will tell you. And you will think that your night's work has been in vain. So he's, he's laying a foundation saying, you did something for me, and I told you I was going to teach you how to build wealth. But he's prefacing it. He says, yo, what I'm about to tell you, you may feel like you wasted your time. It's going to be so simple that you're going to feel like I cheated you. What that told me is the, the laws that govern building wealth are going to be so simple that in our head, we believe that's not it. I, did, I, was, I was in a session the other day and what I was telling, what I was telling the guy was, it's very, it's what you're overthinking it. And I'm telling you something simple that you need to do, but they think it's so simple. It can't be true. It can't be right. There's no way. That's just too simple. It has to be complex. It has to be hard. And it has to be like something I really got. No, first, let's just take step one. Okay. So he says, uh, da, 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 your night's work will be in vain. Then he looked at me shrewdly from under his shaggy brow and said in a low, forceful tone, I found the road to wealth when I decided that a part of all I earned was mine to keep. And so will you. A part of all you earn is mine to keep. What does that mean? Pay yourself first. That you yeah, pay, pay yourself you. first. Pay yourself first. What does that mean though? Uh, Before you pay your bills. In. Well, before you pay your bills or give money to any place else, make sure that you're paying yourself, like putting some money aside for yourself. Mm -hmm. Yo, I worked it when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory. That's when I read this book when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory. And um, I was like, OK, I'll try it. It doesn't seem like um, a wealth principle. It doesn't seem like it's going to help me get wealthy, but I'll try it. So. I had these, um, I had like these little, uh, um, these little envelopes or I, and, and like, yeah, I, I just like little envelopes and every day after work, I put, there was, there was, there was two buckets that I had. I take money and I put it in tithe. I take 10%. So let's just say I made $70 at work in tips. I'll take $7 and I'll put it in the tithe envelope. I'll take another $7 and I'll put it in the savings envelope. Now, I don't know what I'm saving for, but the book said a percentage of all I earn is mine to keep. So every single day, I'm like, okay, now I got $7 where on this coming church service, that envelope will soon be gone. But this other envelope I have, but now I have $7. And then the next day I made $60 at work. I put $6 in there. Oh, I got $15. It took me so long to get to a hundred, but I had it. And then I was at like, I, I turned around, I was at like 300. And then I found myself wanting to pick up extra shifts at work, not to make more money, but to fill up that 10% envelope. It became a game for me. How soon can I build this little savings? Because I remember when I put the first seven dollars in. This was this this was one of the principles that changed my life. And look what happened. Um, you'll see it later. Um, he said, uh, uh, he says, um, okay, Google, cool. can you live in Babylon with? Oh, let me just read this part because it was just so good. He said, is that all? I asked, he said, that was sufficient to change the heart of a sheep herder into the heart of a money lender. He replied, but all I learn, I earn is mine to keep. Is that, is that not? I demanded far from it. He replied, do you not pay the garment maker? So he said, yo, all the, a part of what you earn is yours to keep. He's like, is that all? He said, everything I earn is mine to keep. 
He said, far from it. He said, do you not pay the garment maker? Do you not pay the sandal maker? Do you not pay for the things you eat? Can you live in Babylon without spending? Do you not pay your light bill? Do you not pay your water bill? Do you not pay uh, McDonald's drive through All of the money that you earn is not yours to keep. Just a part, just a portion of it. He said, what if you have to show for your earnings over the past month? What for the past year? Fool, you pay to everyone but yourself. Dillard, you labor for others. As well, be a slave and work for what your master gives you to eat and wear. If you did keep for yourself one-tenth of all you earn, how much would you have in 10 years? Take 30 seconds, and I want you to identify that for yourself. Just calculate it, just real quick. If you did keep for yourself one-tenth of all you earn, how much would you have in 10 years? This book club is so good. I'm so glad we did this. How much would you have in 10 years? Just calculate it. So let's say you make $5,000 a month on your job, about. That's $500 every single month. Over a year, that's 6,000. Over 10 years, 6,000. And now we think, well, 10 years is a long time to become wealthy. What am I going to do in 10 years? But if you have started this process 10 years ago, today, Siobhan, what's up? So I had just a quick question to make sure I'm understanding this right. So you pay yourself 10% and you also pay for those who do tithe, like 10% of your tithe as well. You're not saying to use the 10%, you give to yourself as a, as a tithe, right? Correct. So that, that was me. So I was taking 10% and I was giving it to the tithe. And temper Actually, yo, believe it or not, believe it or not, when I got on this journey, I wanted to make more money. And uh, this is like just the personal relationship I had with God. I'm not turning you guys spiritual. But I said that um, I'm actually going to tithe 20%. So I actually started tithing. And this is like me working at the Cheesecake Factory. So I started tithing 20%. And I was still saving 10%. It was just a personal relationship I had. Meaning I am forced to live off of 70%. And I found out that that was enough. If I, I had all this loose money, I like just loose money. And it would just, it would just, if it didn't have a home, it would just fall through my pocket. I was in a habit of making money and just not having money until it's time to make money again. What you will find, and uh, this is, this is what uh, Arcad found, is that there wasn't much of a difference taking 10%. So um, yes, got it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, he said, uh, and, and watch this, here's the twist. He said, how much, if you kept for yourself one-tenth of all you earned, how much would you have in 10 years? He says, my knowledge of the numbers did not forsake me. And I answered, as much as I earn in one year. Got it? He says, you speak but half the truth, he retorted. Every gold piece you save is a slave to work for you. Every copper it earns is its child that also can earn for you. If you could become wealthy, if you would become wealthy, then what you save must earn and its children must earn that all may help to give you, give to you the abundance you crave. He said, not only if you save 10% of a year's earning in 10 years, you'll have a year's earning. Make sense? So if you make $60,000 a year, if you save 10% of that in 10 years, you'll have 60,000. But he said, you speak only half the truth because along this journey of saving money, the goal is to take some of that money and invest it to make more money. So in the end of 10 years, you'll have more than 60,000 with wise investment. Okay. All right. So um, he, he messes up. He says, um, okay. Have you, have you pretty much saved this money? He said, yes. He said, I've given it. He said, and what did you do with it? He said, I've given it. This is a year later, a year later. 
He said, I've given it to Asma, the brick maker, who told me he was traveling over the far seas and in Tyre, Tyre. He will buy for me the rare jewels of the Phoenicians. My man went to a brick maker to learn about jewels, invest in jewels with a brick maker. He says, um, every fool must learn, he growled, but why trust the knowledge of a brick maker about jewels? Would you go to the bread maker to inquire about the stars? No, by my tunic. You would go to the astrologer if you had power to think. Your savings are gone. He's like, yo, chalk that up, start over. That's a wrap. I don't even know your man, the brick maker, but it's over, okay? That's dead. Start over, okay? The, the principle in that is find people who are experts in what they do. I invest with Terica. She's been in Forbes for real estate. She's been in real estate for years. We talk that that property, they instead of 50,000, they want 45,000 now. And uh, she's sitting the contract over this morning. But she's a brick maker that like I'm investing in bricks with. And now you find somebody who is ex, an expert in the craft and, you, craft and you study under their feet. Okay. Um, okay. He says, so he leaves again and comes back. He says, and it was, as he said, for the Phoenicians are scoundrels and sold to asthma worthless bits of glass. I again save each 10 copper, each 10th copper, for I now have formed the habit and it was no longer difficult. He lost his bread, but he said, okay, I'm gonna start over because I formed the habit. I'm asking you to form the habit. The habit. The more you do it, you'll start to form a habit. Okay. Um, so he leaves and comes back and he says, yo, do you, do you like, do, did you do it again? Pretty much. He says, um, so 12 months later, he came to the room of scribes and addressed me. He says, that is good. He said, he said, what do you do with the money? Right. Cause he, he got it right now. He said, I, you know, I'm making money off my money now. And he says, what do you do with the money? He said, I do have a great feast with honey and fine wine and spice cake. Also, I bought me a scarlet tunic, and someday I shall buy me a young uh, bull, I guess, upon which to ride. To which Algamish laughed. You do eat the children of your savings. Then how do you expect them to work for you? And how can they have children that will also work for you? Again, he's looking at money so visual. He said, you're eating... Like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. You do eat the children of your savings. No lie. When I read this, it was so crazy. Every time I went to spend money on food, I looked at it as eating the children of my savings. I, yo, I'm so glad we're reading this because it, it's really taking me back to a time. Every time, like I, I remember sitting in a store because I had this little savings bucket and things of that nature. And I was in a shoe store. And I was about to buy some shoes. And I'm like, man, I really like these shoes. They go back to get my size. And I'm sitting there stuck. Because I'm like, yo, I'm really about to wear my children. The, the children of my savings. And they're not even, I'm going to mess them up. They're not going to bring me any money back. So they go back. And then I realize, I'm like, dang, I just waste that person time. Because I'm going to try these shoes on and act like they don't fit. And then I'm going to leave. <laughs> I remember it. I didn't want to just act like, I was like, ah, Ah, uh, they kind of tight. Uh, you know what? No, nah, I'm good. I don't like the way they fit. And I left. <laughs> I no longer wanted to eat the children of my savings. Okay. Um, all right. I'm almost done. Goodness gracious. We're running over time. Y'all all right? Y'all good? I'll go through the what we're going to talk about um, quickly. If I, if I know my notebook, here, where did I do my notebook? Oh, wow. That's interesting. Dang, I don't know where my notebook is. Okay. Um... Okay, okay, cool. Okay, so he left and he came back again. He says, um, uh, for two years, he says, uh, I answered, not yet all that I, he said, you know, are you, you know, wealthy pretty much. He said, not yet all that I desire, but some I have and it earns more and its earnings earn more. And do you still take advice for, of brick makers? He said, about bricks? They give good advice, I retorted. Okay, continue. Have you learned your lesson well? He said, you first learn to live upon less than you can earn. Next, you learn to seek the advice of those who were competent through their own experiences to give it. And lastly, you have learned to make gold work for you. I, those are the principles. 
Those are the laws that he talked about. Those three laws. First, you learn to live upon less than you can earn. That's the 10%. We take 10% out and now I'm living off 90%. Or you get to a point where you can take out 20%. Now we're living off 80%, meaning we're living off of less than we earn. But for some of you, you understand credit and how to get credit cards. And because you have that knowledge, it becomes dangerous. Because now you have the credit and you tell yourself you're going to pay yourself back and you wind up living off more than you earn. Which is way worse than living off of exactly what you earn. The plan is to live off less than you earn. But if you keep floating credit and paying for credit for things, now, if it's going to be an investment in a business, I'm here for it 100%. But if you're taking some of the money and you're like going out to eat with your family, you're just putting it on credit and you're not paying it back. I pay off my credit cards every month. We're not floating money. Does that make sense? I'm not floating money. Unless it's for an investment. I mean, I, I still haven't put any investments on a credit card because I take the money that I earn and I put some aside and I use that money to invest. Y'all understand? The goal is to live off less than you earn. That's the first law. The second law, learn to seek advice from those who are competent through their own experiences to give it. So some of us have mentors, shouts out to uh, him 500. He's competent and understands. Some of you have certain mentors, competent and understands, and you're learning, and you're teaching, and you're getting coaching from them, which is awesome. And if you're not, if you're not being coached, I think it's a good idea, according to the laws that we're going to start living by. And number three, lastly, you have learned to make gold work for you. Let the money work for us, okay? He says, opportunity is a haughty goddess who wastes no time with those who are unprepared. And lastly, we, dang, we spent a lot of time. Okay, this, this, okay, here's, here's, here was the, here's like the grand finale for me. This, this part was crazy. So after he started, he started talking and he finished his speech. He says, his friends thanked him and went away. Some were silent because they had no imagination and could not understand. Some were sarcastic because they thought that one so rich should divide with old friends, not so fortunate but some had in their eyes a new light. They realized that Algamish had come back each time to the room of the scribes because he was watching a man work his way out of darkness into light. There was, they all got the same information. We're all on this call, right? We all get the same information. Some of them just didn't, they didn't get it. They just didn't understand it. They just don't. So you're gonna, you're gonna leave and then you're gonna just spend all your money again and be in the same situation next year as you are this year. 2021 is not gonna be your year. Cause you just don't understand. You don't get it yet. And it's not, it's not, the, my job is not this call's job, it's not your coach's job to get you to understand. At some point you, I think some things aren't taught, they're just caught and it just has to click for you. But I believe being in the environment, it helps it click a little faster. So some people say, yo, I, we went away. I just don't understand. The second per person says, yo, if you, there, there was a room last uh, yesterday in Clubhouse where they were talking about, should you sell information or something like that? Some people feel, yo, rich people should just divide up their wealth. They're all greedy and they're all uh, money hungry and it's all about money, and they're not going to give to anybody else. I feel like they should just give it away. I feel like you take all the wealthy people, you put all the money in a pot, and you distribute it amongst everybody else. That's my feeling. But here's what I know about that, is if they took all of the wealth in the world, divided it amongst everybody equally, it's only going to take a couple years before that money finds its way back in the hands of its rightful owners. It'll be a few years. Grant, he was talking, all right, y'all all right, right? Okay. Grant Cardone was on Clubhouse 
and he did a show. He said, yo, they, he dropped, they dropped him off in a city where he couldn't use his phone. He couldn't use his connections. He couldn't use his, um, any of his money. And he had to figure out a way to make a million dollars in 90 days. I don't know how it went, but that joint sounded super cool. I think he did it on a TV show. They dropped him off in the city, took his cell phone, can't use his contacts, can't use his name. He has to just be dropped. He said he's brokered and broke, no money. He has to figure it out, how to make a million dollars in 90 days. I said, golly, when you have the formula. And then I start calculating in my head, how is this going to work? I wonder what he's going to do. He's probably going to use all that personal development that he has, like all the books that he uses. And he's probably going to talk to people the way people need to be talked to. Can't take information away. And then the last person, the last group of people said, some had in their eyes a new light. And I could see it in your eyes. I guess I'm looking at Dwight. He's like, oh, I'm about to get this back. I'm about to change my family's life. I could see it. It's a, it's a light. It's an, an awakening. I get it now. Okay, so um, yes, that's that. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're gonna like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.